Fingers have a special sign I happen to discover They have three fingers in the air And flash it to each other They send their greetings to you They sing them and they shout But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out The stain. Tom Thomas, what's going on? If you really want to watch TV, then you gotta turn it on first. I'm not watching it, I'm looking at my reflection. I'm working on a self-portrait. And which shelf will you be painting in your shelf-portrait? <laughs> it's not a shelf portrait. It's called a self-portrait. It's when an artist draws or paints a picture of himself. Of himself? Ha! You think you've got muscles like this superhero I see here on this paper? Uh, how can I see exactly what my muscles look like? And anyway, let the artist do his work. Tom Thomas! Your shirt! There's a spot! <gasps> oh, no! Wipe it off, quickly! It's even worse, so now what? Uh, what we really need is Masia. <laughs> Ordinary dirt can be cleaned off with a brush or washed off with water. But there are stains that are not that easy to get rid of. Stains from fruit need to be soaked in hot water first. Blood stains, on the other hand, should never be washed in hot water. You can clean stains from paint or rust as well. Only for those, you'll need to use a special stain remover. But stain removers should only be used with the help of a parent or other adult that knows how to use them safely. Hey, I know a great way to do it. What do you use to get rid of pencil marks? An eraser. Only this shirt isn't paper. And so what? Let's try it. What's the harm? Now I've got three colors to get off. New idea! We should paint over it with this correction pen. With whiteout? Yeah! That was a bad idea. Now I got it. You have to use some water. The wash should be better, don't you think? No! You can't wash whites with colors. And you've got a white shirt with colors all over it. Then how about if we try some more water? How much more can you use? <sighs> uh, any more ideas? You know what? It's possible we did something wrong. <laughs> Everything you did was wrong. You should have used a spot remover to clean off that stain. A spot remover? No way! Oh, take a look at it, Simka. I think it's marvelous. They painted that white shirt so nicely. Tula is Simka's best friend. She's very tall, almost as tall as Papus. Yeah, she's the tallest one in her class. And she's strong, too. Tula loves to laugh, and she does it louder than everybody. That's just the way she is. Cheerful and kind. Ready to help anyone who needs it, and making sure her friends are getting along. Of course, I don't like that she treats me like a baby, especially since she's the one that's a scaredy cat. She can even get scared of a cute little spider. And she believes in all sorts of silly superstitions and horoscopes. Tula will believe anything you tell her, which is really great because it makes it so easy to play tricks on her. But she takes it all in good fun. That's because she's Tula. It was on purpose, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Tom Thomas, no! Your mom will punish you for just one of them. And now you're gonna make more stains? Don't worry, Nolik. I forgot that this is an old shirt and I'm allowed to get it all dirty if I want. And I tried so hard to clean it. Put another spot there. And over here. One in the middle. And a line over there. Splendid. That looks great. And how about down there? Wow. It's like fireworks. Splendid. There's 
a name for this style of painting, and properly speaking, it's an abstract painting. They have lots of lines and spots, and everyone sees whatever they want in them. Yeah, look! A golden ball by the river! And there's Tom Thomas with an F on his report card! <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, what did you do to your room? And your shirt. You know what they call it? It's, uh, abstract art. Hmm, there's something good in it. I like it. Abstract art. Isn't it great? Ah, oh, my little artist. Can you believe that pixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh. Where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know... Um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> the thing that's special about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. So you're telling me that Nolik's not here, right? He's really not here. <laughs> Who is that? Where? <gasps> All right, now I remember. There's another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh... You're here, and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention and be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. 
And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye, then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied. That's not fair. And hiding. That's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? Can you believe that fixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The alarm clock. Ha! It didn't ring again. Nolik, let's go fix the alarm clock. Simka, wake Tom Thomas up. Tom Thomas, get up! Tom Thomas! <laughs> hey, you'll be late for school. Tom Thomas, get up already! Uh, uh. This is really something. And where's the battery in here? No, this is an old mechanical alarm clock. It doesn't work with a battery. It uses a spring. How's that work? People wind up the spring tightly. And then as it slowly unwinds, it turns the gears, which turn the hands of the clock. Uh, 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 chew. Uh, oh, what? The alarm clock broke. Uh, Let's hurry and get you washed up. Tom Thomas, are you just getting up? Dad, the alarm clock didn't go off. It's broken. Here's the problem. It won't turn because the feather's stuck in the gears. Nolik, help me. Uh, uh. Papas, what's going on? It looks like it's an earthquake. Huh, it really is broken. Bad time to throw out this old piece of junk. Tom Thomas, I'm off to work. Don't be late for school. I won't. Where are we? In the trash can. And what's gonna happen to us? Well, you see, Nolik. People throw out broken things without a second thought. Even appliances that can still be fixed end up in the trash all the time. And the trash is taken to a horrible, deadly place called the dump. If a fixie happens to be inside a broken appliance, he will come face to face with great danger. Once, my uncle got thrown into the dump buried inside an old TV. He barely managed to jump out of the bulldozer's path, and it was a miracle he didn't end up in the incinerator. After that, he just roamed around the huge dump, trying to fix anything. He became totally crazed. Whew. Good thing the Fixie Rescue Squad managed to find him and bring him back home. I don't want to scare you, but we might be taken to the dump, my boy. Papa, I'm scared. Huh, where is 
missed the alarm clock. Maybe my dad took it to get fixed. <gasps> but Nolik and Papus are in there. Now just a little bit further. Ah! I don't want to go to the dump. No tears. There's only one way out of here. We need to fix the clock and make it ring. But how? Inside the clock, there is the main spring, and there's also a second spring. The second spring is held still by a brake, and so it waits. When the little hand reaches the time the alarm was set to go off, the spring jumps off the brake, and the gears are free to start turning. That makes a little hammer beat the cup of a bell very, very quickly. And that's how an alarm clock rings. So this feather is stopping the gears and not letting the hammer strike the bell. Exactly. I'll start rocking the gear back and forth and you tug it. And one. And two. And three. Tadish! Simka, I think I can hear my alarm ringing. Run to the sound, quickly! Uh-huh. Someone turned the alarm off. Whoa! And here comes that earthquake again! Nolik! Nolik! I'm here! Nolik! We fixed the alarm clock! So what was wrong with it? A feather got jammed in the gears. And how could a feather get in a clock? Oh, it's probably from when I put the alarm clock under my pillow, so it wouldn't wake me up. Huh, so you mean because somebody doesn't like to get up in the morning, we almost ended up at the dump? By the way, if that somebody doesn't hurry off to his school soon, he'll be late. Oh, you're right, huh? I almost caught one yesterday, I chased him by the flood. But if I told my daddy, he'd say, it's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them Or find their whereabouts But if you meet a fixie, please Don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie, please Don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie, please Don't let their secret out The team The first period is almost over Tom Thomas's team is leading to nothing. There's no getting around the difference in class. Simka, pass to me! <laughs> Simka, over here! Nothing. And that's the end of the period. Time for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, fire! My motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and 
And here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. Nulik, pass! Shoo! I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. <laughs> ah! Six nothing! Oh. It's a blowout! Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know, speed. What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. Then here's what we're gonna do. We got it! Attack and check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Like that. Because you're by yourself here, and we are a team. Team! <laughs> camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look! Is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas! That's the manipulator! Who? Not who, what? It's a mechanical arm! For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got! But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera! Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the internet. 
That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas. It's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it. Go away. You go away. You go Tom Thomas, what are you watching? Uh... Is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I see run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. Now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. <laughs> la, 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 la. Then she starts dancing. <laughs> These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. Do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Daddy! I'm looking at my reflection. I'm working on a self-portrait. 
And which shelf will you be painting in your shelf portrait? <laughs> it's not a shelf portrait. It's called a self-portrait. It's when an artist draws or paints a picture of himself. Of himself? Ha! You think you've got muscles like the superhero I see here on this paper? Uh, how can I see exactly what my muscles look like? And anyway, let the artist do his work. Tom Thomas! Your shirt! There's a spot! <gasps> oh, no! Wipe it off, quickly! It's even worse, so now what? Uh, what we really need is Masia. Ordinary dirt can be cleaned off with a brush or washed off with water. But there are stains that are not that easy to get rid of. Stains from fruit need to be soaked in hot water first. Blood stains, on the other hand, should never be washed in hot water. You can clean stains from paint or rust as well. Only for those, you'll need to use a special stain remover. But stain removers should only be used with the help of a parent or other adult that knows how to use them safely. Hey, I know a great way to do it. What do you use to get rid of pencil marks? An eraser. Only this shirt isn't paper. And so what? Let's try it. What's the harm? Now I've got three colors to get off. New idea. We should paint over it with this correction pen. With whiteout? Yeah. That was a bad idea. Now I got it. You have to use some water. The wash should be better, don't you think? No, you can't wash whites with colors. And you've got a white shirt with colors all over it. Then how about if we try some more water? How much more can you use? <sighs> Any more ideas? You know what? It's possible we did something wrong. <laughs> Everything you did was wrong. You should have used a spot remover to clean off that stain. A spot remover? No way! Oh, take a look at it, Simka. I think it's marvelous. They painted that white shirt so nicely. Tula is Simka's best friend. She's very tall, almost as tall as Papus. Yeah, she's the tallest one in her class. And she's strong, too. Tula loves to laugh, and she does it louder than everybody. That's just the way she is. Cheerful and kind. Ready to help anyone who needs it, and making sure her friends are getting along. Of course, I don't like that she treats me like a baby, especially since she's the one that's a scaredy cat. She can even get scared of a cute little spider. And she believes in all sorts of silly superstitions and horoscopes. Tula will believe anything you tell her, which is really great because it makes it so easy to play tricks on her. But she takes it all in good fun. That's because she's Tula. It was on purpose, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Tom Thomas, no! Your mom will punish you for just one of them. And now you're gonna make more stains? Don't worry, Nolik. I forgot that this is an old shirt and I'm allowed to get it all dirty if I want. And I tried so hard to clean it. Put another spot there. And over here. One in the middle. And a line over there. Splendid. That looks great. And how about down there? Wow. It's like fireworks. Splendid. There's a name for this style of painting, and properly speaking, it's an abstract painting. They have lots of lines and spots, and everyone sees whatever they want in them. Yeah, look! A golden ball by the river! And there's Tom Thomas with an F on his report card! <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, what did you do to your room? And your shirt. You know what they call it? It's, uh, abstract art. Hmm, there's something good in it. I like it. Abstract art. Isn't it great? Ah, my little artist. Chased him by the fled. But if I told my daddy, say, it's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You 
really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The internet. Well, maybe it's a. Uh... Don't think so. It's probably a. Uh... You call for me, children? What's the matter? Take a look. I've never seen anything like it. <gasps> hmm. What in the world could it be? Hit. Maybe it's a bathroom scale? Or a clock with a digital display. Wait a sec. Are there instructions around here for this thing? I couldn't find them anywhere. That's a problem. Well, then let's try to figure it out. What are you trying to figure out up there? What a huge hockey puck! It's big enough for a monster! <laughs> and the name is so silly, T-Robot. <laughs> Why don't they just call it the Troll Butt? Or I got it, the Troll Boat. <laughs> Please, stop the racket. So what could this thing do, huh? I have no idea. We could try finding it on the internet. Where? Just run along, you two. We don't need any internets. We can handle this. Go on, go. Don't interrupt us. Sure, whatever you say. Come, Nolik. We'll find it out by ourselves. Yeah! Uh, how? So, you remember what it was called? Uh-huh. Uh, a troll boat. Nah. A troll bot. You're right. Hop to it. Robotic vacuum cleaner. You mean it vacuums by itself? It's a robot, so yeah. Class, there's just so much cool stuff in this computer. No, look, this information is not on this computer. It's on the internet. From your computer, you can send a letter to another computer. You can also download a song or a photo from another computer. It's all possible because most of the computers in the world are connected to one another as part of a huge web. And this World Wide Web is what we call the Internet. Thanks to the Internet, we can take a peek at just about anywhere in the world and find information we need about anything. It's an electronic... Vegetable slicer. No, it's a printer for round sheets of paper. There's no way. Grandpus, we found out what they do with it. You're back again. You, you mustn't, mustn't interrupt, interrupt the adult. Just wait a second. Nolik, turn it on. Uh, turn what on? Don't you turn on anything. Ready, Ready set, jump! jump. What is that? It's a robotic vacuum cleaner. It runs itself. And where did you find the instructions for it? On the internet. Just ask and it tells you. You can really just ask and it tells you? Uh-huh. If you want, we can show you. We'd love to see it. Sure, why not? Yep. Whoa! <laughs> hmm, on the internet. Hey, 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 wait for me. What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? The answer's easy to get. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. It, it says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. You send a letter to me. I send a letter to you. You send a letter to me. It's just so easy to do. We're writing letters now. The fun is sending to get. We're writing letters now to the internet.
fight with Johnny. Oh, wow! How could you? What was the fight about? We argued over who's cooler, a racer or a boxer. A race driver's cooler. Of course! That's what I said to him. But Johnny had to prove Vince a boxer. Well... He proved it all right. Can't you see? You don't prove anything at all by fighting. What a profession. A boxer. Yeah! Now your dad, he's got an amazing profession, a journalist. He gets to travel to different countries and brings back all sorts of funny stuff. They even show him on TV. No. What do you mean? Boxers are cooler. Everyone's really afraid of them. Don't be gloomy, Tom Thomas. Have a candy. I've got a good idea. How about a taste tester? That's the best job. And what is he testing? A taste tester is someone who tests the tastes of drinks and food. Yeah, how come? They want to find out if the food is delicious and what all the flavors are in it. Super! What a great profession! But a taste tester is not a job just anyone can do. I can do it. Then let's check. So open your mouth and then close your eyes. Try to figure out what the flavor is inside of this piece of candy. Mmm, strawberry. That's right! Good job, Tom Thomas! And this? That tastes like orange. You missed that one. It was lime. Yeah, Tom Thomas. If you want to be a food taster, you're going to need to do some serious practicing. Let's do it. Mm. Raspberry? You got it! Simka, how do they get the candy to be hard on the outside and filled with liquid on the inside? Don't get distracted. You're training. Yeah! <laughs> hard candy is made like this. First, a sweet syrup is cooked until it is thick and stretchy. Then the mixture is pulled into long, hollow tubes that are like noodles. As the tubes cool down, they start getting harder. And it's right then that the tubes are filled with the soft, fruity center and then cut into pieces. It all has to be done quickly before the tubes have a chance to get totally hard. And that's how candy is made that is hard on the outside and soft on the inside. It could be strawberry, only I just can't tell anymore. Ouch! What's wrong? My tooth. Was I hearing things? Or did someone yell? Mm. Oh, I got it. Come on, let's take a look at your tooth. A taste tester has to be the most delicious profession in the world. They taste all sorts of things like cheeses and chocolates and decide which ones taste better. Everything is tested for taste, even water, because different waters taste differently. There are also testers who don't test food and drinks, but rather they test the smells of things like deodorants or perfumes. Not everybody can become a really great tester. First, you have to be able to tell apart all the different tastes and smells. You also need to know when it's time to stop, or you can make yourself sick and lose your ability to tell things apart. That's the reason why taste testers only take very small bites of food and very, very little sips. If you're gonna have a bad tooth, it's good to have a mom who's a dentist. That's true. She's a good dentist. She'll fix it in no time. She'll pull that tooth right out.
So, did she pull it out? Nah, she just gave me some medicine to gargle. Your tooth, does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts a little. Hey, now I definitely know who's cooler than a boxer. Who? Who else? A dentist. Even boxers are afraid of going to the dentist. Can you believe that fixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. goes. A flashlight. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh. Where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know... Um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> the thing that's special about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. So you're telling me that Nolik's not here, right? Where? All <gasps> oh, right, now I remember. There's another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh, you're here and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. And be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, 
my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right. Shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied. That's not fair. And hiding. That's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray! We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? Toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clock stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. Friction. Yeah, and it's not easy to open, either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you, because I've got a pack of mat. All right. Simka, can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack of mat, all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. Um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil oh, slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <gasps> What was the 
the problem you had with the friction. I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew! We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like, I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look! What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. <laughs> Yeehaw! Pixies go to fixie schools and study to there's so much they need to learn To save us from disasters There isn't one appliance That they don't know about But if you need a fix it Please don't let their secret out But if you need a fix it Please don't let their secret out But if you need a fix it Please don't let their secret out The suction cup <laughs> Where's Professor Eugenius? Did you see him? Not yet. Strange. He told me he'd be here today to conduct some tests. Rampus, right here under the glass. There's a note. Hmm. Dear friends. That means the note's for us. That's because Professor Eugenius can always count on us. I'm off for a conference today. So what should we do? While I'm away, please keep an eye on each of my tests. There's the wristwatch. And where is it? It's right there. Look! How come the watch is in the water? So the fish can know what time it is? No, like, don't be silly. This is the test he made for the watch. You see? It says water resistant right there on the back. That means that water shouldn't get inside of it. I see. So the professor needs to check if it will work underwater. Understand? I, yep, I got it. The watch is working. So now, the doorbell test. We'll go look. It's over there. What's that thing doing? It tests the button to see how fast it wears out. To check the quality of appliances, toys, sporting goods, or just about anything, they need to undergo serious testing. Take, for instance, telephones. They need to be tested with both heat and cold because they have to work in places as hot as Africa and as cold as the Arctic. Computers are tested to make sure they can be shaken and rocked, too. That way you can be sure they'll work on a desk at home or outside in the park or while you're taking a ride. Different kinds of products need different kinds of durability tests. For example, athletic shoes and car tires are rubbed and squeezed over and over to see how long they are going to last. Yes, testing's very important. Without testing, a machine or appliance could let you down at the very worst moment. If guests come to visit once a week, and once every month, a hooligan comes, pushes the doorbell, and runs. Then I figure this doorbell will last right around 400 years. That's long. The doorbell is still working.
working. That's very good. And also, uh... What? I don't know. We need to turn the note over to read the end. But how? Oh, raise the glass, that's all. Hup, hup, hup. We should find a suction cup. A suction cup? Suction cups are made out of rubber or other elastic materials. When a suction cup is pressed against a smooth surface, the air inside is squeezed out. The air outside wants to get back in, and so it pushes down on the cup. The rubber edge of the cup won't let the air leak in, so the outside air keeps pressing down and the cup keeps on sticking. And that's how a suction cup sticks to a surface by using the power of air. Wait a minute. I know where there's a really big suction cup that we can use. <gasps> that's a huge suction cup, Nolik. Diddies, diddies, diddies! Well done, Nolik. Only we need to hurry before air gets under this suction cup and it unsticks. My suction cup will never unstick. Well, let's see what it says here. Simka, you'd better hurry! And make sure nothing gets broken here in the laboratory while I'm away. Huh, and what could get broken around here? Ah, the glass! Look out! Yeah, so much for that. And who's going to clean up all this broken glass? <laughs> you don't know? Nolik! He told us to use that suction cup. No, Simka! She was reading way too slow. Listen, there's no need to fight. I came up with the idea of the suction cup. I should clean this. Come on now, Grampus. We'll clean up this mess. Professor, I still think the suction cup was a great idea. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik. But what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her, and that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the mac uh, uh, um, the pack mat and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! 
He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka! And what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop ducking. Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh. Uh Chusaka, no! Get out right now! <sighs> Tish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed! Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed. Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over. What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight. Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. Friction. Oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you because I've got a pack of mat. All right. Can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack mat all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and 
and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. <gasps> um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Are you all right? Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> What's the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew! We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like, I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look! What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, 
Is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look. Is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who. What? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the Internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the Internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas. It's good to see you. Wow! You flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it! Go away! You go away! You go away. Tom Thomas, what are you watching? Uh... Is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I say run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. <laughs> now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. <laughs> la 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 Then she starts dancing. La 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 <laughs> These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. <laughs> I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. I can't do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Daddy! Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny, infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fix, 
shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool. I'll be the captain. This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. Hands on deck! There's a giant octopus! I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out. Brave sailors like us. We're not afraid of storms. Tom Thomas, be careful. Hey! Oh, ah. Did it break? Nope, it's all tish. It's not close to tadish. Take a look how this mask broke. Whoa. Oh, uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it. Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No leg! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Danish! Ooh. That's better, thank you guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. No, Lick, you gotta get out. You'll get sick from that stinky air. I can't get loose. I I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look, what an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? <laughs> Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. I shoot. Well, all right then. Do your homework and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik. I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik, where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. <laughs> Oh, phew. Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there.
gonna be fine. Nolik, do you know who I am? A giant octopus? present for my mom. Today is Mother's Day. Then you need to go give it to her. I can't. Dad and I are going to congratulate her together. What's your dad gonna give her? I don't know. But when he gets back home, the ice cream will have melted. Then put it in the freezer. And what if mom looks in there and finds it? The surprise will be ruined. <sighs> so where won't she find it? I'll tell you where. Inside of your dad's office. I don't see any place to hide it here. There's no freeze or anything. Why don't you take a look inside the box? Here's a thermos, but what good is it to me? Thermoses are for keeping things hot. The ice cream will melt in there. It will not. A thermos is made by putting one bottle inside of another. Between the bottles is an empty space, and that's the secret of a thermos. That space stops heat from getting out or in. So if there's hot tea inside, the empty space doesn't let the heat from the tea get out. And if there's ice cream in the thermos, the space stops the heat that's outside from getting in. And that's how a thermos keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. That's it. I'll go and play for a little while. He didn't even say thank you, did he, Nolik? Where are you? Nolik! I'm here! Where? In the thermos! What are you doing in there? I wanted to see that vacuum you talked about. Just don't touch anything. And don't even think of licking the foil. The ice cream's so cold, your tongue will stick to the metal. It's already stuck. What did you say? It's a wonderful time of year. Holidays, presents, snowballs, skates, sleds. But the cold is also something serious that you shouldn't fool around with. The most important thing is to dress warmly. Cover your head with a hat and your throat with a scarf. Then there's less chance you'll catch a cold or get a sore throat. And to keep your hands from getting chapped, don't forget to wear gloves. And never walk around in wet shoes in the winter. That's a sure way to get yourself sick. And there's one more thing I want to tell you. It's great to have fun in the cold, but use your head. Don't eat snow or stick your tongue on metal fences, poles, or doorknobs. Your tongue can get stuck so strongly to the metal that it will be very hard to get off. I wish you all a glorious winter. Tom Thomas! Nolik's tongue got stuck! Where? In the thermos! Hurry! I'll explain everything later! Dad, you're already home? Mm-hmm. Dad, why are you taking my present? What do you mean, your present? I mean this one. Since when did it become yours? Oh, hi there. What's the fuss all about? Oh, it's nothing at all. I, uh, have a huh? surprise for you. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. A thermos? How wonderful! 
wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is there something in here? I don't think so. <laughs> Inside, there's a present from me. Vanilla ice cream. My favorite. And how did that end up in there? <laughs> Thank you so much, my sweeties. Nolik, you got me so scared. Thank goodness you thought of turning into a screw inside of there. Uh-huh. Does your tongue hurt? Uh-huh. Do you think you can talk again? I can talk. Oh, that's good. We better hurry. We still need to go and wish our mother a happy Mother's Day. And you should, too. But if you need a fix-it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix-it, please don't let